And so you were the first, the first big arts organization uh, to cancel your season. I think we were the first you know, major orchestra to do so. And you know, I'll tell you what went into that, that decision. First of all, we were going to be in on, on a major European tour in, right. um, in um, May. Uh, it's something, you know, we were the first American orchestra ever to be invited to participate in the Mahler Festival. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was the Concertgebouw, New York Philharmonic, Vienna Philharmonic, Berlin Philharmonic. Jap van Sweden was getting the Concertgebouw Prize, the big gala. Um, we were in London, we were in Berlin. It was, you know, one of those dream tours. But when we came back, we, we knew we had to cancel that. But then when we came back, there were just very few weeks left in the season. And honestly, I think as we analyzed what was happening to our sales and looked at the emerging crisis within the United States, we just knew we couldn't put on the rest of the season. And in fact, what we had to do was accept that and focus on what we were going to do to deal with dealing with uh, working with our patrons, ticket refunds, announcing things, communicating all of that, and that that would give us the ability to focus on what was really going to happen. So that was our decision not to do it in bits and pieces, but on March 23rd to say, let's be realistic. You know, let's right. do whatever we can. Let's do whatever we can to make sure that, uh, you know, this is a viable institution in September. What about things like morale among staff and the players and so forth? How are you managing that? Well, I think what leadership is about in a time like this is it's about communication. Um, think of what everybody is going through right now. We're working in isolation. We're dealing with a completely new uh, the pandemic is unlike anything we've experienced. We're untethered, we're scared, we're concerned for our families, we're concerned for our own health. And so at this time, I think what you need to do and what you cannot do enough of is to communicate. So we are reaching out, we have regular, yesterday, I have to say there was one bright spot, which was in this past couple of weeks, we had the entire New York Philharmonic staff on a Zoom meeting. And it was it was just terrific. And it was so good to see people's faces. People had, at the end, I said, I'll take any questions. There were a couple of questions, but you know, you know what people did? Mostly they didn't have questions. They had helpful observations, ideas, um, commentary, you know, to share, to share with everybody. And that was just, uh, I think, so touching and uplifting for all of us. And so Susan, in that, you know, when I when I went through, I wanted the staff to know what they had together accomplished in this two week period in March. And so at the end of it, I said, all right, now let's all give each other a big round of applause. And everybody <laughs> applauded. And it was it was just it was it was a wonderful moment. So I think leaders in this moment have to have to find a way that they are honest, they are realistic, but they also there will be a future. And they, they point the way towards that. And, you know, I, you've heard me say this probably many times, but the New York Philharmonic has survived the Civil War, both World Wars, and the Spanish flu epidemic or pandemic in 1918. And we're still here. And we will be here again after this is over. We don't know exactly what we'll be like, but we will be here. <laughs> yeah.